Warp Terminal wants to become the VS Code of the Terminals. That's a bold claim. I mean... <coughs> okay, wo sind wir drin? Scheiße. <coughs> Man, okay. Um, a warp terminal wants to become the. Nothing's perfect, boys. Nothing's perfect. Warp terminal wants to become the VS Code of the. Oh, wie sehe ich denn aus? <laughs> oh fuck. Warp terminal. <laughs> oh man. Kann ich dich wegmachen hier ein bisschen darin vielleicht? Nee, lass nicht einfach hier. Okay. Warp Terminal wants to become the VS Code of the Terminals. And that's great. I think the Terminal world actually needs some kind of push. It needs to modernize a bit because there's way too many terminals and terminal emulator developers, but also terminal power users who try to live in the past. We're not living in the past anymore. We are living 50 years later now. It is, by the time of recording, it is 2022, almost 2023. And things like clicking with the mouse into your command prompt is not standard. Like you can't do this unless using warp terminal. So in warp terminal, one of the great features which we are going to destroy today is the command line editor. Not completely, of course, but one of the great features the command line editor is giving you in warp terminal is that you can actually click with the mouse into the command line and continue typing there or editing there. And it's not a new feature request. It's, it's not that warp was actually inventing this idea and implementing something that people have been desperately crying out for like decades. It's not that case because in the end we are all terminal users, at least most of us, and we use our keyboard to type commands in and that's what you should be doing. However, sometimes it is convenient to use the mouse. So especially to serve those people, at least XTerm.js, but I also think some other terminal implemented translating mouse clicks into cursor moves, which is sadly highly unreliable, especially when it comes to multi-line prompts, especially if your command line takes more than one line in the terminal, then that's a problem. So warp terminal is fixing this, but how does it fix it? It's not letting the shell render your, your input anymore. It is actually doing it all on the GUI basis and almost nothing wrong in this. The problem is that if you want to have one of these features, you need to have a supporting shell uh, via shell integrations and you can only do it in one terminal. So if you want to use your mouse to click around, which works reliably, you better use warp terminal. So great for warp terminal because, you know, let's just all use warp terminal and be done with it. Oh, it's only working on macOS. Oh, who the heck is having macOS anyways? Mm, some people do. Okay, so what can we do? How can we, how can we fix this? How, how can we fix this madness? How would be the proper way to implement this feature? Why don't shells implement it? Because we do have mouse protocol support in the terminal already, right? Like you can use Vim, left click, right click in there. Even in NeoVim, now you have a right click support. You can use the mouse in HTOP or in Midnight Commander and whatnot application. So mouse support is there. Why, does, why don't shells support this feature yet? Well, I mean, I think the answer to this is fairly trivial once you understand how VT protocols work. How does the VT protocol work? First, we have to take into account that these protocols do exist since many, many decades. And apart from deck locator support, which would be fitting, almost nobody's implementing this, probably due to the not so easily understandable documentation. So there, apart from deck locator support, there are also more, more or less, more or less modern mouse protocols in most term emulators implemented. It starts with X10, which is really basic. It supports basically clicking. Click events, which basically means, okay, left click, right click, plus the, the cell coordinate and be done with it. But this only works up to a certain page size, like not 80 by 25, but something a little bit longer, as long as the encoding actually can encode the number. Everything else is ignored. VT200 actually extends this idea of um, extend mouse events to also notify the application when mouse release events are happening. So now you're not getting just notified as an application if the mouse is pressed, but also when it is released, plus the mouse coordinates. But then you still have this problem of limited page size. So you can't, you know, like nowadays you have, many of you are having 4K screens most likely. You wouldn't be able to use your mouse on the entire screen. This is fixed with UTF-8 encoding of the coordinates, but it's not really convenient, especially if you also want to implement the parser side. Of course, we all know how to decode UTF-8, but it's not nice. It doesn't feel really well integrated. Plus the fact that maybe you're also interested in mouse move events. What about this? So for the mouse move events, any event tracking was invented 
to also report whenever the mouse is uh, moving. And to tackle the UTF-8 encoding problem, or the encoding problem in general, SGR encoding was introduced. And now you already start to realize, oh my God, what, what a mess, what a mess, so much going on. So SGR encoding basically uses the CSI syntax. Why do you call it SGR? Well, SGR is also using a CSI syntax, but who cares? And UXVT, like this one famous terminal thought like, ah, but we still want to go our own route. Let's call it UXVT and be slightly different than SGR. Now we have SGR and UXVT encoding. Basically, both are CSI encodings, only minimally differing. Why the heck do we have both of them. So this is all great. Now we have CS make use of it, but maybe you want to implement a painting program and you already see where this one goes. Cell coordinates will not be enough for that. So two years ago, like once upon a time, someone was submitting a pitch to Thomas Dickey, the current maintainer, not author, but maintainer of Xterm to apply a patch, which extends SGR encoding by introducing a new mode to report pixel coordinates rather than cell coordinates. That's actually a great thing. Some people might want to have this. So uh, apart from this, what's missing? Like, like, what's the problem? Why do shells not yet implement mouse? Well, it's probably more the basic stuff that nobody thought about so far, uh, which is the fact as soon as the application requests mouse events, the mouse cannot be used to select text anymore. Okay, so I can, I can probably show you this in one second. Let's just go over here. And we're having some, some nice text here. Let, let's go to some projects, say here, and let's do LS. And if I'm now selecting here, that's all nicely working. But as soon as I'm starting an application, say Vim, here to, to the README, as soon as I'm starting Vim, um, I, cannot, I cannot use the mouse to select text anymore because this is now inside of the application, right? But outside of this application, just, you know, just inside of your shell, you, you, you wouldn't be able to do this anymore. So one way to work around it is to introduce a new deck mode in the terminal, which tells the terminal that, hey guy, I'm interested in uh, mouse events, but don't stop supporting things like mouse selection. So please continue doing mouse selection. I've actually done some proof of concept here. So let's actually try to go there, target X debug. So this is my example program. And here we see uh, passive mouse tracking is not supported. But at least I'm getting the numbers here. But what if I'm clicking the mouse? Nothing is happening, you see. Like you don't see anything. Just even though I, I try to click here, nothing is happening. Nothing is happening. Okay, that's actually kind of bad. But what I can do is maybe let's just use a patched version. Let's start it up. And now let's try again. So now we're getting the mouse events. Um, and this little note here says mouse tracking is supported. Oh, actually, look at this. We are already using the mouse here and, and this didn't work before. And that's basically what I want to have. Like I want to be able in the shell to allow the shell to receive mouse events such as mouse move events, but also click events. So now just imagine I would be implementing a shell myself. I register for this event, like in a passive mode, and I want to support mouse clicks to reposition the cursor. That should definitely be possible. And the same goes for probably Hoover support. Warp Terminal does have Hoover, so that you see some tooltips about the command you're hoovering, such as tracking here or mouse or passive, you know, these kind of things. That would be nice. And that's definitely possible. Now with this patch applied, but now we come to the challenges. The first challenge is um, how to treat the mouse wheel, for example. I said, when the application is requesting mouse support, mouse selection does not work anymore. But this is a decision by the terminal emulator. It decides that either I do mouse selection or I forward it to the application in case the application was requesting mouse events. If the application does not request mouse events, then, you know, I keep on going with mouse select and control click and wheel up, down, etc. And what if I want to have both, you know, like this is what the passive mouse tracking VT proposal tries to fix here. And with respect to wheels, like what you use in the terminal to score your history up, that should still be possible. And my take on this is that the application should make it bindable. Like the application should make it configurable. If a shell thinks it should want to use the wheel buttons 
on your mouse to do some actions, it very well already knows ahead of time, oh, but people might potentially use it for scrolling up. If I really want to do this, I should probably have it configurable and probably also with some modifiers such as Control Shift, Alt, Command, whatever, you know. So that's a non-issue. The next challenge is uh, mouse coordinates. And of course, top left is 1-1, one, one, which means line 1, column 1, and bottom right is whatever your page size is, such as column 80, line 25. But if you're scrolling up, what coordinates will your application receive? And of course, they should be normalized. What used to be 1-1 one, one before should still be 1-1 one, one afterwards, even though the user is scrolling up. So some recalculation needs to be happening inside of the terminal, but that's a non-issue. And the fact is, this problem did exist before already. And most likely your favorite terminal is not even supporting it correctly. At least when I was trying around, I found quite surprisingly, iTerm does it right, for example, and some others don't. It's a bug which needs to be addressed, and this bug did exist before, so it's a non-issue for me because it's trivially fixable. So let's head over to the next challenge. Oh, the next challenge is actually the biggest, is probably the bar razor. It's the end boss of all. Get all Terminal Later developers to agree on one common semantic and make you like it for it. <laughs> I mean, honestly, uh, I, I'm in the Terminal Later world for about three and a half years, no more, like three years actively developing a terminal. Oh, oh God damn it, it's three and a half years already. The first thing I realized when joining the Terminal Emulator developer crowd is there's lots of fuss going on. There's lots of rage quitting and complaints and shouting at each other going on. And of course, that's only a few people. So don't get me wrong, it's only a few people, but the louder they shout, the more they are heard, right? And that's not good, that's not healthy. We should have a code of conduct within the Terminal Later community so that people respect each other. That would be nice. So this is the challenge for me to advertise and propose for this VT extension such that other Terminal Later developers and therefore their terminals, but also the application developers and TUI developers, CI developers, that they're all implementing this feature in case they can benefit from it. Everything else can be worked around it. But politics is, to me personally, here the bar raiser. So the final challenge is to get the shades to implement it. And what would the shades gain from this? Of course, I mean, the first most obvious one is like making sure that they can use the mouse click. So probably the most obvious feature that a shell would benefit from implementing is that you can reposition the cursor using the mouse. That's already a win. But the other one, like if you register for any event tracking, you're also getting mouse moves. And that is actually really interesting because now instantly you can think about implementing features such as, such as pop-ups. You know, you can implement tooltips in your shell. They may not look like GUI tooltips, but you can have them in case you want to. You know, just hover and get some information about it. Why not? Okay, the pull request exists. I mean, you have seen a proof of it just right now. And um, I hope you like this, this idea of moving forward in a way that every terminal can benefit from it, not just one terminal, which is a nice thing. So I, I really, I, I'm really thankful for Warp Terminal to have brought this up. It, it was brought up in the past already, but always beaten down or just, you know, half implemented with these cursor move translation instead, which is unreliable. And so the passive mouse tracking VT extension proposal will be a great opportunity for all of us, not just terminal emulators, but also TOI developers and CI developers to bring the world more forward, not just for one terminal, but for all of us. We all have tastes and maybe you don't like warp terminal, but you like gnome terminal, or you don't like gnome terminal, but you like, I don't want to say it, you know, some other terminal. So dear warp developer team, keep up the good work, but maybe we can actually work more together in the future. I know we don't always agree on how you want to do stuff, but I also have to respect the fact that you want to monetize and we all should respect that. But a few features of those you're implementing are perfectly implemented from the outside and made more reusable. This one would be really nice. So many thanks for you for watching. If you made it this far, maybe you want to consider subscribing for future virtual terminal content. In the end, that's what I want to talk about, like terminals and share my experience and my development on my own terminal, but also my feedback on other terminals or on other applications. So in case you find something interesting, uh, just tell me. Or if you don't like something, just tell me. And I try to adapt and grow with you. Many thanks. Bye-bye.